desire to do, but the evil deeds that I do not desire to do are what I am ever doing. Now, if I do what I do not desire to do, it is no longer I doing it. It is not myself that acts, but the sin principle which dwells within me, fixed and operating in my soul. Lord have mercy. That's in your mind, y'all. So I find it to be a law, rule of action of my being, that when I want to do what is right and good, evil is ever present with me. And I am subject to his insistent demands. That, that, that's, that, that's that heart. <laughs> For I endorse and delight in the law of God in my inmost self with my new nature. Yeah. If any man be in Christ, that is. And, and, if, and if you have, uh, go Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Let, it, let him be your example. And if you do like David did in, in Psalm 51, creating me a clean heart and renew a right standing spirit within me, then you will endorse and delight in the law of God in my inmost self with my new nature. But I discern in my bodily members, in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh, a different law, a rule of action, at war against the law of my mind, my reason, and making me a prisoner, another slave, to the law of sin that dwells in my bodily organs, in the insensitive appetites and wills of the flesh. Oh, happy and pitiable, uh, and, uh, pitiable or pitiable, wretched man that I am, who will release and deliver me from the Relief, uh, 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 from the from the shackles of this body of death. Oh, thank God he will. Through Jesus Christ, the anointed one, our Lord. So then indeed, I am myself with the mind and heart serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. That's the kind of power that sin has over us. And you have to learn how to uh, 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 allow that, that, yeah, consider ourselves dead. To sin in, your, in, in our relation to it. Because we are absolutely in relation to sin. When sin is operating within our bodies. And we yield and submit and surrender over to that sin. We have engaged in an unholy relation to sin. So let not sin. Therefore I read that. Do not continue offering. Uh huh. Now here's how. Here's God going in to give us some instruction y'all. Because Hosea 4 6 says. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And how to live a disciplined life in Jesus Christ. God will not give you, not have you to uh, uh, expect you to do anything without giving you instruction. And his instruction is contained in his word. The entire word. The 66 books of the Bible. So here's what it says in verse 13. Romans the 6th chapter. Do not continue offering or yielding your members, bodily members and faculties to sin as instruments. Tools of wickedness. But offer and yield yourselves to God as though you have been raised from the dead to perpetual life. And your bodily members and faculties to God, presenting them as implements of righteousness. Now that verse 13 is really crucial and important to understand. When God gives us an assignment, when God gives us instruction that, uh, for something he wants us to accomplish, he's not going to have us do something and without us having some form of uh, understanding or background on how to get her done. I said that. Yeah, I said that, right? I said, get her done. I, I, I spent four and a half years living and working in Huntington, West Virginia, when I worked for the Social Security Administration, and I absolutely know hillbilly country. Get her done. Yeah, he would not give it. He would not do that to us. And, 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 and what he, God does is God takes what we already knows, and he just tells us, you know, you've been doing it this way. Now do it that way. Watch what it says in the Word. Do not continue offering or yielding your bodily members and faculties, the sins, instruments, and tools of wickedness, but offer and yield. It says don't continue offering and yielding, but it now says but offer and yield yourselves to God. Amen. But but continue and offer yourself to God. We're almost done here because it tells me that the, uh, I done lost some power because we're running out of juice. Amen. That's all right. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We got power and we got power that comes from him. Amen. Amen. But continue offering your members. Amen. Continue offering your members. 
and, your, and, and, and but continue offering you and yourselves to God as though you have been raised from the dead to perpetual life. Uh-huh. And your bodily members and faculties of God presenting them as implements of righteousness. Of righteousness. I'm almost going to stop right there. So the point that we're trying to make is, is that um, to live a disciplined life, how to live a disciplined life uh, uh, for Jesus Christ is not without. It's not very. It's not something that you just do overnight. It's just not something that just happens to you. It's a process that you must go through, and it takes discipline to do that. To live a disciplined life, you have to have self control. You have to be willing to allow yourself to not only have self control, but to be controlled not by our own self, but to be controlled by the spirit. You have to learn how to be spirit controlled. That means surrendering and, and your life over to, over to Christ. Totally. Give yourself away so the Lord can use you. That's what the song says. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away so you can use me. You need to learn how to, we need to learn how to give ourselves away. And when we do that, then we will absolutely uh, learn how to live a disciplined life for Jesus Christ. So we want to we're going to pick this up on next on, on this coming Monday, Amen, and conclude this series on how to live a disciplined life in Jesus Christ. Now, now, now we didn't got to this point of the end of the message, Amen. But now it's time to do something else that's very important. Anytime the Word of God goes forth, it is incumbent upon that that person that God has used at that time. To offer a plan of salvation to someone. And that plan of salvation is Jesus Christ. Absolutely Jesus Christ. And there is a way that we can bring you into salvation. Uh, by the word of God. And that is found in Romans the 10th chapter. And the 9th and the 10th verses. I'm going to read this into your hearing. And I want you to listen very closely to the words. Because if you're unsaved. You don't have to wait to get to church. To do this what you need to do to come into salvation. You just need to do what this, what the word of God says. And here it goes, Romans 10, 9. Because if you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and in your heart believe, adhere to, trust, and rely on the truth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But with the heart a person believes that he is to trust in and relies on Christ. And so is justified, declared righteous, acceptable to God. And with the mouth he confesses, declares openly and speaks out freely his faith and confirms his salvation. If you agree with that, then the Bible says you will be saved. Now, if you're in a backslidden state, meaning that you've stepped away from your relationship with God and you return to your worldly way of living, or you or to the dictates of your flesh, well then God has a way of remedy for you as well so that you can be reconciled back into the family of God. All you need to do is to confess and repent of your sins. And he's faithful and just to forgive you of all your sins and unrighteousness. You can go look at Romans, not Romans, I'm sorry, 1 John 1 and 9 for scriptorial reference for that. And then if that be the case, amen, he will reconcile you back unto him. Now, You've done. You 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 gotten saved. Those have gotten saved, and there's some that have maybe been gotten reconciled and returned back. As in in the uh, spirit of the prodigal son, uh, the next thing that we need to implore upon you is that you need to be in a Bible believing, teaching church. Amen. You need to be in a church that will teach and preach the unadulterated gospel, the the good news, the truth, and and be not uh uh. uh uh, intimidated by those that they're preaching to and preaching a gospel that that people will only want to hear see sometimes you have got to, well not sometimes at all times you got to preach the word that's what the apostle Paul told Timothy a uh, 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 young uh, pastor uh, his son in the ministry told him just preach the word and when you preach the word you got to cry loud and spare not amen and and be and be apt uh, to ensure that people are being taught they're being nurtured under the word of God. Because the Bible is very clear in 2 Timothy 2.15 that you need to study to show yourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed to rightly divide, which means understand the word of truth. And this way you will understand and you will know what it takes to, to live a disciplined life for Jesus Christ. And you will not get yang, you know, pulled back and forth by, the, by your flesh and the devil into that life of degradation. So get yourself into a Bible believing teaching church. By chance, perhaps, you live in the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania area, or South Jersey, <laughs> New Jersey area, amen. 
uh, Southern Maryland and the, and the entire state of Delaware. Oh, you're within short commute distance to make it to sound the alarm ministries. We're located at 3101 North Market Street, West 31st Street is the side entrance to the building. The building is actually the headquarters of the Union American Methodist Episcopal Church under the leadership of the presiding prelate, Bishop Linwood Wright out the third, who graciously has allowed us to utilize the space there. We share that space with one of their satellite churches, churches, a New Hope, UAME. Uh, 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 amen. Uh, under the capable and, uh, and, and admirable leadership of, of Pastor Reverend Gilbert Bruton and his quarterly conference assignee assistant, Reverend Marilyn Turner. Their services start at 11 a.m. Ours start promptly after that. And uh, we say 1 p.m., but be, know this they have been known, we have been known to start at 12 30 or thereabouts. So we will absolutely welcome you in and fulfill the, uh, 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 the work that God has assigned to the church. The church is not the assignment that Jesus Christ left for the church was not for the church to see how big it can grow uh, uh, with, with, with the uh, congregation or how large its edifice and beautiful its edifice could be. That wasn't the assignment. The assignment is found in uh, Matthew 28 19. Go ye therefore and make disciples of men. Amen. Uh, uh, teaching, and, 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 and that's what the church is supposed to do. We're supposed to bring in uh, people, teach them, train them, nurture them, allow them, to be allow them to grow and mature in their faith and their understanding of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means if they got gifts, let them work in the church. And then they go out and make disciples of others. Amen. And that's what we will do at Sound the Alarm Ministries for you, on your behalf. So now, I've said all of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this. Stay hungry and thirsty for the word of God and foremost God himself. God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Study to show yourselves approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed to rightly divide and understand the word of truth which is the Bible. God loves you and so do we. Sound the alarm ministries. Joel 2.1 is our foundational scripture for the ministry. Uh, we are crying loud and sparing not. Amen is 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 uh, our motto from Isaiah 58 1 now I'm going to give the, the closing benediction and one last word after that uh, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present your faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory majesty dominion and power both now and ever amen 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 Sound the alarm ministries. We are crying loud and sparing not any one other thing. We do the thing in the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye. Amen, amen, amen. This concludes the live. Uh, uh, this concludes the live. Um, podcast and the conference call for Sound the Alarm Ministries presents now a word from our sponsor. We thank God for each and every one of you. God bless you. Bye-bye.